in this video, we're going to talk about how to create an ad content in Test Center. Content in the context of Test Center refers to question bank. So when we say creating and adding content, we are referring to creating and adding question bank into Test Center. So let's get started. Let's take a look at how you can add content within Test Center. You go to the content menu on the left, you click on manage, and here you have the existing content. So at the moment, I have four content. So I can add additional content and I, and I can also remove an existing content. So let's talk about how to add content. So you click on the add button. You'll be presented with three options. You can add the content you created from your PC. You can add an existing content created by the test center team, or you can add the content you uploaded on a website. So let's talk about adding existing content from test center website. Once you click that option, you'll be you'll see this window, this dialog window. So here are the options you can pick from. So these are existing content created by Test Center team. So you have content from UTM over 20,000 questions. Then you have UTM mock. The difference between UTM and UTM mock is just that UTM mock is designed to be suitable for centers that want to create or set mock. So this time around, the questions are not from a particular year, they are from various years. So mock one could be from maybe questions from maybe 2000, 2005 and so on. Then we have question from white pass question. So this is a database of white pass question, about 30,000 question. Then we have junior white question. We have common entrance, Carpedia, ICANN, law by exam, that's law school exam in Nigeria. Then we have questions past questions from so, so many universities, especially federal universities in Nigeria, the post UTM past question. So if you don't want to create your own question, you can just pick any of those questions and make use of them for your, your use case. So in this particular example, I'm going to pick law by exam. So let's say I'm interested in this question bank. So a, a content code is just a just an alphanumeric that you want to use to, to, to identify that content. The content code can't have space. It's just alphanumeric that is letters and numbers, then with underscore. So now, now that we've created, uh, we've selected the content we want to download, you click on download. You can see that the download is taking place from the status bar. So the download is about 50%. So what is happening right now is Test Center is downloading the content from, the, from our question bank website. And after the download, it will be automatically added to your project. Now, the, the content has been downloaded and added to the content uh, menu. So here you can see it. So we have law by exam, and this is the name of the content, the author, and so on and so forth. So let's talk about the structure of this content. So you can see that the objective question count, that is how many question, objective question do we have in this content, in this bank of question, right? You have 2,140 objective question. In theory question, we have 2,270, then in total we have 4,410. So if you want to see a breakdown of the subject, you want to know what are the subjects in this content, you click on subject detail. And now you can see the subjects contained in this particular content. So we have civil lit litigation, we have corporate law, criminal litigation, and so on and so forth. So if you pick any of the subjects, you can see the season for each subject. So what do you mean by season? Season means the year of uh, question for that particular subject. So let's say, for example, uh, I pick uh, corporate law. Now, under corporate law, the season that I have here is just 2021. So a season can be can be year. A season can also be maybe a semester. A season can also be anything that that tells you the the subset under that particular subject. That's what the season is. Okay, then this is for objectives. So for the theory, we have the following subjects as well. And these are the seasons for theory. So for 
civil lit litigation, we have quest we have 2021 question to 2020 and so on and so forth. So this is how content is structured in Test Center. Then another thing you can do is to export. So let's say you want to get this content and save it locally on your computer. You can click export and you'll be asked to select a place or a folder where you want to save it. And once you save it, you have a physical copy, you have a copy of this content on your PC. So let's talk about another way to add content. So to add content, you can also pick the option of URL. So the URL option requires that you provide a full URL of where the content is located on the website. So this comes in handy where let's say some created this question in the format that is compatible with test center. So it has to be compatible with this with test center. I will explain how to create content that is compatible with test center. So once you've created your, your content and let's say the content is available on the website, like maybe HTTPS, something like this. So let's say abc.com slash let's say content dot zip. It has to be a zip file. So let's say this is the full part of that uh, content. You just provide a full part and you give this content a code. So it could be maybe for a particular exam. So let's say the exam is for ICAT, for instance. You can just type ICAN, right? So once you have provided the, the code, you click on see there is going to download it and automatically add it to your project. Okay, so that's how you create or you add content from URL. So now let's talk about how to add content from your local PC. Before you can add content from your local PC, you need to have created the content. So that takes us to the question of how do you actually create content from scratch by yourself from your PC. So we have a video dedicated to explaining this in detail, but I'm just going to talk about how to do that very quickly. So this is like a quick guide on how to create content from scratch. But in case you want to get full detail tutorial on that, we have a dedicated set of videos for that. So let's take a look at how to create content from scratch and add it to Test Center. So to create content from scratch, you need to have a content editor, Test Center content editor. So the content editor is designed to enable you to create content easily. So it's quite straightforward. So how do you get the content? How do you get your content editor? Just go to file. If you have not installed the content editor, you just go to file, you click on content editor, and then you'll be asked to save the content editor in any folder of your choice. And once you've saved it, you'll be asked to install it. So the the content editor is an is, is, a, is, a, is a file that is an install, installable file. After you get it from here, you install, and after installation, you launch. So what I'm going to do is to show you the content editor after launching it. So if you launch the content editor, this is what you're going to get. So this is the content editor. So after installing and launching it, you are going to get this as a content editor. So you'll be asked to start a new project or Maybe you want to create one from create one from scratch or continue from where you stopped. So in this case, I'm going to create a new project, a new content project from scratch. So let's take a look. Once you click Start New Project, you will get to see this interface where you'll be asked to select the folder where you want to save your content. So I want to save my content in this particular folder. So let's call our content. Let's give it a name. So let's say there's a competition I have. So I can call this competition content. So this is a content maybe for a particular competition. So I'm going to save this. But once you save it, you're going to get this interface. So mind you, this content editor can be installed on any PC. So it doesn't have to be on the admin system or on the server system. In fact, it can be set by a teacher or whoever is responsible for setting the question. So it's very easy to, uh, to, and it's all offline. So you don't have to be online. You don't have to be on the admin server to actually create the content. So let's take a look at how we can easily create the content. So create the content starts with creating a subject. So let's say my competition has two subjects, English and math, right? So I'm going to create subject name, English, and another 
subject math. So now I'm going to highlight English. Under English, let's say this particular year, I want to the, the, for for the season I'm going to choose this particular year, which is 2023. So it means I can update this content next year. I can call the new the next year's content 2024 and so on. This is 2023 content, right? You can give this the year could be the term, it could be the season could be the year, it could be the term or the semester for that of that particular subject. And subject could also be course, it could be a particular course, maybe uh, FST 101 or any particular course. So if this is for a particular higher institution, you can choose, you can make your subject anything. So once you've created your season, you click on that particular season and then you are good to go. You cannot start typing your question. So how do you type a question? Very straightforward. On that question section, just type your question. So you can say something like, uh, uh, maybe fill in the gap. Fill in the gap. Then you can just continue. So in this case, I'm going to put in a dash, then just some random thing. So I'm going to type in some random option. So then once you've typed the options, the next thing you, you do is to select the right answer. So let's say the right answer is arm, right? So you just check this arm and that's it. You've created question one. So how do you create question two? You click next, then you create question two. So in this case, you can just have another question like select the verb. So select a verb. So in this case, let's say uh, option A is gold. Option two is com. Option three is let's say rice and let's say this is toby so in this case let's say that this should be the answer to option b okay you can do that for as many questions as you have right and that's how you create content now there are other things you can do here for example you can extend the number of options so let's say your question has more options you can click add option, then it's going to add more options. So let me remove this, this fifth option. You can also provide explanation. So let's say you want your candidate to see explanation after taking an exam. You can provide the explanation to why the answer is B. So there are a lot of other things you can do here. You can add special characters, you know, you can create equations and so on, images. So I'm not going to go into detail as to how to create all those things. We have a dedicated video for that. So, but this is how you just set your question. Then let's go to mathematics. So I'm going to add a season. You can either right click or you click this season here. So once you add a season, let's call this 2023. And on the math, I'm going to click this and now I'm good to go. So I'm going to have something like two plus five. So the answer, of course, in this case should be seven. So let's say I have other options like three, maybe four, and let's say, Eight, for instance so you choose the right option so you go to the next to create the next you just click next so let's say in this case I have 7x equals 14 so in this case so let's just put some random options so we know the answer should be 2 so let's say this is 10. So you select two. So now we've created question for math, right? So you, what do you do next? You save. So that's it. So once you've created your content, you save it and that's it. Now there's something I need to explain. This content I've created is for objective. As you can see, we are under objective questions. So if I want to create theory question, I will go to the theory tab, create the subject. So let's say in this case, I just want to create English. Then under English, I can add question. But before then, I need to create a season. Then this is 2023. 20, then I'm going to create question. 
bad question. So let's say this is question number one. So theory is quite different from objective. Theory, there is no option. You just have your question and you have explanation. So then you can also define whether this question is gradable or not, and you can define the mark. So there are a lot of things you can do here, but point is you can create a question. You can just say, uh, explain the following. So that may be the question that you just type the question or you can have images or what have you. So this is for theory. So we have objective question, theory question. Then there's one more question type, which is subjective question. So some people call this kind of question, German question. So German question refers to questions that uh, you, is like filling the, it's like you filling in the gap without being given an option. So is not objective because there is no option and it's not theory because you are not expected to explain your answer. So subjective questions are questions that you are just meant to fill in the gap, maybe just write a word. For example, if I say Nigeria gained independence in dash year and there's no option. So you're expected to just write the year, right? So just write the year. So this kind of question can be created with this content editor. So how do you create subjective question? You create subjective question under the objective questions. So what you do is this. So let's have an example. So in this case, I'm going to sell, I'm going to create another subject. So let's call this subject civic, right? So this civic education. So this civic education, let me pick a particular let me say the season is 2023. In order 2023, let me just provide a question, which is Nigeria gained independence in dash. So in this case, the answer is meant to be 1960. So let me say option D is the answer, which is 1960, right? So I can put other option, maybe 1970, I can put other option, maybe 1980, right? Then, but then, if you go this route, it means you are creating an objective question. But if you want to make this question a subjective question, what you would do is to leave only one, to have just one option. So what you need to do is to delete all the options and leave just one. So now that you have one option, just type 1960. So you have just one option and the answer is 1960. So what happens here is this. The software will automatically see this as subjective. Whenever you have just one option, and of course there must be, the option must have, uh, the option must have a value, right? Just option A. The software will automatically treat this as a subjective question. That means the user will not see any option. Instead, the user will be asked to type the answer. Okay, so now we've created a question for civic. So let's create another subjective question. Mind you, you can have both subjective and objective questions side by side. So I, I can say that, okay, my question number two can be an objective question. So for example, I can say something like, you should drive on the dash side of the road. So let's say you have the following option, left side. So we have right, then we have middle, and we have back. So these are the options. So in this case, option, uh, question number two is an objective question, whereas question number one is a subjective question. So now that you're done with your content, just click on save. I mean, you just click on the save button and you proceed. So the next thing to do is to set your product settings. So this part is very important. This part is going to define the auto ID you see uh, on test center page. So I can call this co this content competition. Then the version I could use 2023. And content ID, you can just use anything. So let me just use competition, company name. So let's say I want to use 
the same name, IF Sawi Limited, right? Then author's ID, you can just use IAF Sawi or whatever your company ID is. Then the revision is just like, okay, this is the first version of this content. So I'm going to leave it as revision one. So once you click save, you are done with the content. The next is to just deploy. So deploy implies you want to get the software uh, uh, in such a way that you can import it into test center. So once you deploy, you are done. So mind you, this is just a quick guide on how to create content. There are other things you need to know about creating content, maybe for some complex things like you want to add table images and so on. So you can look out for our tutorials on in-depth tutorial or lesson on how to create any type of content using a content editor. So another thing I need to quickly edit here is let me edit the subject property. This is important because we don't have up to this number of questions. So in this case, I could I, I may just choose one, two, three, four, five as my core, my question list. And let me make the default to be two. Then I'm going to save this. You can ignore every other setting. The setting I'm providing here will be like a setting the app will present to me in case I don't want to keep typing the number of questions. So you'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. So I, I'm going to select this property. So this one, two, three, four, five, then I'm going to use two as a default and click OK. So now you can click on save and redeploy. Just click deploy and you're set. So I'm going to show you what we've deployed. Take a look. So let's take a look at what we've deployed. So everything I've just done is saved inside this folder because that's the folder name I provided when I started this project. Then this is the file that contains, that. this is the file that launches the content and this is what we've deployed. So whenever you click on deploy, this file gets created. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's say I deleted this folder. So let me delete this zip file rather, and I go ahead to redeploy. So this is what happens, right? So if you click deploy, so what happens is it creates this file. So this is basically all you need at the end of it. At the end of it all, this is this contains everything you've created, everything you've set, all your question and anything, both images and every other thing you've created. So this is what you have to, you have to add to test center when adding content okay so let's take let's go to test center and let's add this content so now we're on test center so to add this content we're going to click on add then click from local pc once you click from local pc you'll be asked to provide a content code so the content is just like an identifier of the content you're about to upload so in this case, in this case, I'm going to use competition. Then you click on proceed. Once you click on proceed, you'll be asked to browse to the location of the content you just created. So now we have the content you just created right here. So you select the zip file, you click open, and that's all. So it gets imported right here. So you can see the detail of our content. So the auto is this the number of question six which is correct that's objective we have two two questions from each subject from each of the three subjects then theory question we just have one and in total we have seven questions you can check the detail on the objective we have english maths and civic education then on that theory we just have english so this is how you create and add your content from scratch so that's how you go about creating content on test center then one more thing you should note is if you want to continue or update your content let's say the one you created on your pc here's how you go about it you will open the folder containing the project you created which is this then once you double click on this dot tdc file it opens up your project and it allows you to continue exactly from where you stop. 
so it's as easy as this you can easily create content close your project and resume typing at any time so that's how you make use of the center content editor to create content from scratch if you wish to delete any content let's say you don't need such content again you can just go to that content so let's say i don't need this law by exam any longer and i don't want to keep it on my pc i can just click on this cross sign then i'll be asked if i want to actually delete it and i'll delete but note if you have need for this content or if there's a pending test or exam that relies on this content you shouldn't delete it because if you do so your candidate will not be able to sit for such exam so once you are sure you are you don't need this content any longer you can delete it and it's as simple as that is gone so the law by exam content is gone so this is how you create manage and add content in test center